Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see that Misu is actually awake, which is a shocker because it's early in the morning for you. <sighs> All right, let's get started. It's Christmas and I know y'all just want to take a break. I want to take a break. <laughs> so let's just try to get it as done as quickly as possible. Hello, Greta. Uh, uh, we'll start with you first because I don't know if when you'll have your dinner with your mom, your family. So let's get on it. First of all, uh, I love the whole details you have with the vending machine. It's so cute. <laughs> I'm just going to zoom in on the details here just real quick. <laughs> That's so adorable. Alright, but major issues that I'm seeing here is that I think our characters are a tad small in uh, comparison to like the rest of the scene. This whole section right here feels really bare. So we're going to probably make the characters a little bigger first. So shadows. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, you have a little bit of weird coloring right here, so let's zap these out. Pick of the dog. Yeah, you do have to add make your make the pick of the dog right here into your own dog or else this is does not qualify as acceptable. I'm gonna reject this. Even though I know like this character right here is part of the story, it's <laughs> you'll be cursed. Okay, uh, let's see. How do we do this? Huh? Huh? Oh my gosh! <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna bring these up. What? What? We're gonna... Oh my god. What? Okay, we're gonna make these a little bit bigger, just a tad bit, and scoot them down a bit. Are they supposed to be on chairs? Yes, okay. Honestly, instead of chairs, you might consider putting them on like a radiator or something so it fits the scene better, or you could put them on cardboard boxes. Let's see how we can do this really properly down what is layer management i don't know the layer management is really giving me a headache right now <laughs> you labeled them all which is great but also you have the you fell into the trap of you used <laughs> you didn't pay attention to the label so you just colored it into the wrong place <laughs> okay it's okay it's okay we'll, we'll fix up your layer manager right now uh um okay so what this guy this guy should be below is that what's happening yes maybe so but i the foliage looks good though good job looks a lot better than the one from last time uh, let's hide that one. Okay, I'm gonna merge those together so it'll be easier for me to add stuff, delete stuff. Bye bye, Jesse. You'll just have to rewatch the playback later, the VOD. I'm glad you finally got to try out uh, painting foliage because I think even if you don't like 
personally like to paint foliage. I think there are some skills that translate into just regular pictures, regular other things. Of course, Misu, we have a monthly challenge if you have not noticed. <clears throat> I think we would love to see your rendition of some trees this month or a flower or something. Texture. Ah, okay, leave that alone then. Okay, let's add a box in here or something. Give them a radiator. Or, yeah, I think we'll have to give them a box or something. And we're gonna try to use local color similar to the stuff that we've used before. So this reddish purplish color, very, very saturated, looks like brown in the context of everything. Another box right here or something. I don't know. You can you can play around like the with the labels and stuff. So you establish your lights and darks first, and then we come back in for deeper shadows as necessary. Shoot. Same for this guy. You can add the whole the whole yellow tape thing just to add a little bit extra color to the boxes so they don't look so bland or anything. I don't know. Something like that. Blah 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 on the box. You can bring some of the other colors that you've used uh, from the other places back into here so you get a little bit more connected. There we go. Um, and then let's just talk about basic composition because we have a lot of empty spaces. What I'm gonna suggest you do is we add some shadows here and there to help you break up the space. So let me get that your favorite purple color and we're gonna pretend there's like a whole ass tree right here. And we're gonna break up some chunks. And then on top. Let's see, where's a good brush? We're gonna hide this space a little bit because it's too much empty space right now. Like I when you have too much space on the sides it can make the characters feel like they're less important and I feel like we definitely want to bring a little bit more focus in terms of these characters. So that's why I'm gonna suggest we add just a little bit of a tree right here that's in silhouette so it's not gonna take too much attention away from everything. Other option if you don't want to do the whole um, tree uh, is that we change the perspective of this piece and instead we can either push the perspective a little bit lower or a little bit higher so I'm gonna hide these so you can get an idea of how you might 
see that. So if we push them higher, uh, we might end up seeing more lanterns than you have your vending machine over here. Totally accurate, totally perfect perspective, of course. And then you can have them over here. <laughs> just pretend <laughs> the perspective is right. It's just to give you an idea. <laughs> okay. Woo, woo. Maybe their foot is here. I don't know. Some weird shit. You can have some more people on the side. Yeah, it's just so you can consider things to consider. Uh, I've already forgot what we had. You would have the perspective more in this push this way. Tree. I already forgot everything from what the original picture was. And then we would just shrink them down just a little bit more so they feel a lot shorter and closer to the ground. have a bike lane right here so you can um, add some words to the floor someone riding a bike over here passing by bike. okay that was one way you can fill up the space other option is you can go down low so maybe instead you have your Oops. We love perspective. Yes, I'm basically forcing you to do more perspective. <laughs> okay, really? <laughs> Super accurate perspective. <laughs> You'll probably hate yourself <laughs> when you do this. Um, then you could have the vending machine over here. vibe of the city anyway. You showcase a little bit more of the city. Which probably will take a lot longer because there's a lot more background stuff to do, but maybe something you might like to do. machine right here 10 out of 10 perspective um, some buildings maybe some weird buildings right here fill up the space you can do some blurry people very <laughs> okay so this would be if we go for a worm's eye view 
I'll just label these so you have an idea later on. And then bird's eye view. So those are two ways to get a little bit um, more interesting perspectives and also just just you know to fill up the space a little bit and you, you get a little bit more dr dr drama but if not uh, other option is just to cover up the space a little bit um, and we might use some more shadows to help us kind of cheat our way through this I'm gonna maybe zoom this piece in a little bit Get this shit out of here! How do I ban them? How do I ban them? Let's see. Uh, ban! How do I ban? Ban! Yes, ban them. Oops. I am totally professional. I can't can't see jack shit. Okay, move over. Oh, Twitch bots are just another breed, aren't they? Okay, and then maybe let's finish up that shadow underneath them. So we get a bigger picture of what we're working with. I would probably also suggest you add some more people in the front foreground over here so it feels a little busier. Even if you don't like, you know, flesh them out, they can just be silhouettes. Uh, but the important thing is we have to kind of make this space feel less empty. Then you can also do some... Let's do some bike lanes. simple. I can totally draw a bike. <laughs> and then that way, uh, we'll keep the tree. I mean, if you don't want to do the tree, what we can do is instead is we make a whopping big old lantern, like right here, this way. And then I would suggest you potentially break up this building shape. So instead of just using one building, we're going to add some more color buildings next to it. So another one right here. So you get a little bit of variety in terms of your building types. Shoop, more colors. It's totally not how you do a building, but... <laughs> But it's the idea, you know? Um, and then for this background right here, we're gonna change up the sky color because this gray is not working for me. We want a little bit more bluish colors because you have such vibrant colors, you might as well make use of it.
And then if you do want to have a building, we'll just have one or two peeking out. So that way you still get a little bit of that sky contrast. Um, this right here, I would totally suggest you take a look at like... Maybe those uh, really back alley kind of window designs because I would potentially want you to break up this big blob a little bit more so maybe we can do like something like this alleyway this a little bit and then add some windows And that way you see how the shape looks a little bit uh, more interesting in terms of the background. Let me blur these people so you can see an idea of how simple they need they just they can be. They don't have to be super complicated. Okay, so for these lanterns, I would suggest we push them a little bit darker so you can really capture that bright glowing effect. See that? Uh, so you can do that real quick just by darkening up the edges. Because if you take a look at how like actual lanterns are, like the red ones in the sunlight, they are actually pretty dark. It's just, it's very saturated in the center. And then you can use little different colored tassels if you want. I don't know. Or maybe we'll just use the golden because that is the traditional color. Where's that guy? Okay, this guy needs to scooch. Uh, where? Where is that color? Oh, uh, okay. Um, and then another thing is that our perspective is a little bit wonky. You would want to. I do this we're gonna scoot these down Move these characters up just a tad bit. Keep those up there. This is potentially not the best way to do this. Let's try doing liquefy. So the thing that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to push this horizon line down a little bit because it's too high considering uh, we want to give him the feel that he's really far away. If you have it too high, he looks out of place. So I'm just gonna scoot it down a little bit, not too much. Then again, I am no perspective expert, so maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Okay, 
this is a tree right here. If you don't do the tree, I and mean, we instead we do the lanterns, instead I would suggest you have a shadow. That's just basically the building next door, or like the building from the other side, casting a shadow on this side. Just so you get a little bit more uh, interesting lines going towards the picture and helping you break up the shape a little bit. Doesn't have to be like the tallest. don't do those you can use the lantern lines as ways to add little shadows And instead of having this guy so far out, we're going to make him in shadow. Let's see how I can do this. So you then get a little bit of that ominous feeling too. And then you can, don't forget to do the little reflection on the uh, vending machine because that will help you bring a little bit more interest in the vending machine itself. So you can just choose like a really light color and very lightly uh, use one of these layers and just throw it on there. Okay. Uh, you also want to be careful about this. I, I, I would probably make these just a little bit wider. It feels very wobbly. <laughs> on these center blocks. I don't know how the hell they got those um, foot legs to stand perfectly in the center of those center blocks. So we may potentially make the center blocks just a tad bit bigger. So where's the shadow? Okay, we'll make these just a weensy weensy bigger. So I don't feel like it's going to fall the heck off.
Okay. There you go, something like that. And then of course, gotta change the dog. And just final comments about the character's poses. They feel very stiff right now, so instead I would have her slouch a little bit itsy bitsy more. So push her forward. Pet chaos? Oh no. Anyway, I was just talking about all the stuff you should do, so go watch the VOD later. We're gonna fix up your characters a little bit, their poses right now, because it's very important for them to feel very relaxed, because this is a very chill kind of day for them, apparently. They didn't have any um, demons to hunt. So they're just here vibing. Let's make that jacket as baggy as possible. And let's slouch her body forward and push her legs forward too. She girl boss in it, so she literally man spreads like no one's business. I'm playing pretty loosey-goosey with the anatomy here, so if anything, you might want to look up a reference or just take a picture of uh, yourself slouching so you get that uh, pose proper. Let's move this leg up. Okay, so her pose is slightly fixed, still kind of wonky, but you get the idea. Him, uh, we're gonna have him slouch back a tad bit, so that means we're gonna push his t torso back a little bit. Shoop. Make sure we add a little bit of shadow so it feels like it's pushed back. That also means we'll see a little bit of his back over here. And don't be afraid to go bigger with the pants, especially if they're baggy. They're going to not follow the shape of the legs anymore. So we're gonna go just a little bit wider, especially where it pulls around the bottom of the leg. We're gonna be ca careful, very careful with Greta not to make his shirt too big or else he's basically wearing no shirt at all. Um, the neck collar part is actually a little bit smaller.
and in terms of making his uh, mouth look like he's chewing something, I would rather suggest you put the chewing part on this side so you get a really cool silhouette. See that? And it also helps you create a little bit more contrast against the jacket itself. He also has kind of longer hair, I think. And then for her face, we, we gotta do a little bit of adjusting with liquify because I think I might have messed it up. Uh, be careful not to have her forehead stick out too much or she looks like she's an alien. Push it back a little bit and voila, it looks better. Okay, shoot. We'll push his arm out more so he feels a lot more relaxed. Yeehaw! Exactly. I'm so excited for Christmas. Finally get a vacation. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> it's been a long year, everyone. We deserve the break. Okay, so the poses uh, from before after feels a little bit more relaxed right let's shrink her foot a little bit i think i drew her legs too long staycation of course i am going to sleep all throughout the weekend nobody can wake me from the dead I can't imagine traveling during Christmas because I did it once in, uh, when I was younger with my family during Christmas to Vegas and holy crap, that traffic on the freeway was unbearable. I could, I could not. Could not be me. Alright, so that's basically it uh, before. Just some... Basically just getting you started along with composition and just planning how to do that uh, Go along because I know there's a lot of stuff still not rendered and it's not perfect just yet So I don't want to get too much into detail about rendering I'll let you deal with that <laughs> Okay, let's save that Let's go on to Jesse's Actually, let's start with a new new one Sullivan because welcome back he started, signed up early on and then his credit card had issues so but he's now back and i see he is doing the assignment from my colossal course so let me see if i can pull up that rough ronce picture so y'all have an idea of what we are this talking about do, 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 do. Hold on real quick y'all, I'm going searching, I don't remember where I put it. Here is our picture. Shoomy, shoomy, shoom. 
I see you were using the guidelines that I talk about, which is great. Uh, but first of all, when you're a beginner in terms of trying to get to the place where you're able to paint anything to tell a story, let's not skip any foundation steps. So first of all, we're going to work on our line work. So that means we're not going to be touching any shading, any color, anything just yet. You're going to make sure that your drawing ability itself is really sol rock solid. That way, when we do move on to adding things like value, uh, color, and like environments, that stuff will come a little bit easier for you to build that uh, foundation on, okay? So today, let us critique your work. Oh yeah, bye bye Greta, have a fun dinner. So we're gonna talk about today in terms of the drawing portion of the portrait instead of the shading, because uh, the shading I'll talk about just a little bit, but I want you to kind of get comfortable with drawing before you worry too much about shading and everything that's another beast of its own okay so first of all our drawing skills as I talk about in my Colosa course we're gonna identify where uh, this is the face shape right our oval shape first I'm gonna find the halfway point and this is where the eyes are gonna be so find your halfway points first before anything else same for here Make sure we have a nice oval shape for the whole head. Halfway points can be right here. If you're never sure about if it's the halfway point, you can take your finger and just measure and make sure that they're the same size. Don't move your finger. So I don't want you to just measure like this and then I don't want you to measure like this and then just like move your finger as you go around because that defeats the purpose. Take your finger, try to lock it in as best as you can and move it up and down to compare. So here's gonna be your halfway point. Shoop. Your halfway point, shoop. Okay, so your eyes definitely line up on the halfway point, which is good. Then another halfway is gonna be where your nose is. Another halfway is gonna be where the mouth is, okay? Eyebrows are gonna be about one eye distance apart. It can vary a little bit depending on the person, but so we don't worry too much about that. Then your ears are going to line up with the top of the eye. So let's figure out where we're going to put the eyes first. So we're going to figure out how big to make the eyes. We're going to make sure we leave enough space for five of them or one, two, three, four, four and a half. Okay. So let's break up the space. Try to make that space as even as possible. One, two, three, four, five, about five. Okay. If it doesn't look even, go back and fix that proportion skills or else everything else is gonna look pretty messed up. Okay. Let me just cover, add a little extra spot right here. Okay, so for yours, what we have to do is we have to definitely shift the nose over because we are seeing that nose is deviating a little bit. So you want to scoot that baby over. And again, I want to remind you that right now at this point, don't start uh, shading just yet because you're going to get really confused and frustrated. So we're just going to be using line work for now, okay? Then we're gonna shift the chin back to the center. Okay, see how it's a little bit too much to the left side. We wanna try to make it as symmetrical as possible right now. Asymmetry only works if you already have a good foundation, okay? So try to make it as symmetrical. Doesn't have to be perfect, but try your best. Clean up those lines, okay? Make sure the neck lines up. The face it here isn't too wide. Scoot it over. Okay, I'm gonna lay a good foundation for all of this when we're drawing. And I 
hope you take uh if the video player is still lagging this is the time to kind of hear me say this now uh i in the video i start with line work first because it's so important for you to have a really good base especially for like beginners because we're not used to painting in terms of the same way as sculptors do it if you jump straight into painting that's you're gonna have to change your whole mindset you have to think about painting the face or the person or whatever in terms of trying to sculpt the face out using shadows and everything and that's a little bit harder especially if you have no guideline or reference point for how it should look like which is why I definitely suggest you go back to the basics and start with the line work first so don't jump straight into the shading just yet so we're gonna make sure our ears are round don't have them pointy so let me get that pencil color round shape for the ears okay round shape for the ears and I would totally suggest you just practice sketching practice doodling practice drawing and getting your line like your confidence in your line work really really well before you jump into trying to uh, stray away from references because you want to have the confidence to be able to try to draw anything that you see and some, most times I remember when I was like younger or when I was trying to draw something if I you know if if you don't have that kind of confidence you do tend to get frustrated really easily and kind of give up faster so it's better to kind of get the foundations in before you try to jump too far ahead okay so right here this kind of line work makes me feel like you're a little bit hesitant about your sketching ability so that's why I kind of got rid of all the shadows I don't want you to focus on that just yet okay so when you are sketching you're gonna use like a somewhat grayish paper not pure white that way you don't have to blind your eyes every single time you're working and then you'll use like a grayish color not quite black to start sketching something like this you can do it with paper or pencil you can do it on digitally it's up to you digitally you can manipulate it a little bit more than usual but if you're doing paper, paper and uh, the like the cheapest method is to just do it on paper with a pencil or whatever scrap of paper you find and you can just keep practicing until you get into a flow where you're very comfortable with just like you know picking up a pencil and being like la di la I want to try to draw this that I see and if it doesn't work that's fine you can just do it again all right so back to that guideline right here I set this guideline right here so we're gonna start with the eyes work on that curve shape curve shape don't worry too much about it following her shape of her eye just yet we're just gonna get that foundation eye the almond shape right there practice our curves okay all right so now that we got this curve we're gonna assess how is it different from her face right her eyes are a little bit closer together slightly longer too okay so we're gonna adjust accordingly again make very minimal adjustments because you don't want to go overboard and make it seem really uh, alien like once you got that we're going to start with the eyelash because the top eye getting the eye shape of the top part is such an important foundation for the eye because everything is drawn towards that kind of top lid with the all the darkest part being the lashes right so her eye is very pointy right here and dips just a little bit so we're gonna adjust accordingly dip a little bit so she looks like she has doe eye so this bottom corner should be lower than the top corner and we can accentuate that doe eye by making her lashes droop a little bit same for right here we'll make her eye lashes droop a no excuse me I'm just ready to check out all <coughs> okay I'm just ready to check out okay anyway 
Stay for the side, make it nice and round up here. Her, her eye is very wide, very big, but we still want to make it doe eye. So we're going to drop the bottom lip, bottom corner just a tad bit compared to the inner corner. Then we're not going to worry about uh, making the, the irises any colors just yet. We're going to keep it nice and simple, nice black color. If that's hard for you, what you could do with digital art, you can take a circle brush, nice and solid color, use a different layer. Do one side, do the other side, and just erase away. Of course, this feels very perfect, whereas if uh, you do it by hand, you get a little bit more of a wobbly, organic feel, but that's up to you. Okay, small adjustments to the eye still, very small, making sure the spacing between her eye and her iris matches. Okay, once that's done, you're gonna use what reference point you've got right here, okay? You're gonna use the inner corner to figure out where to put the outside of the nose, outside of the nose. See, it's slightly farther out. So I might even suggest we bring her eye just a little bit longer inwards. And we're just going to draw the pupil, the little holes of her nose and maybe the bottom of her nose. And keep the line for the side of her nose relatively light so we don't get distracted by it, okay? Because that's like a very minimal shadow. Then we start with eyelids, okay? She has really beautiful, droopy, wide lid space, which I'm jealous of, but also, you know, it comes with the territory when you're older is probably gonna be a little bit more droopy. Then we can add her eyebrows. Like, I'm not worrying about likeness just yet, okay, Sullivan? This is not the part for you to worry just yet. We're trying to make sure she actually looks like a, a decent human being first. Likeness is something that will come with time of more practice and everything. I'm gonna draw her nose ring. And when you draw eyelashes, you want the bottom part of the eyelash to be thicker than the top because you want it to feel wispy, okay? So that means we're gonna erase away the tip to the part and then a curve upwards, following from the inside of the eyelash out. because we're just drawing, we're gonna be using, we'll also draw in the bottom lashes so that we get that idea of her uh, eye. Same for this side, she has lashes, nice and long and wispy. You'll notice what I'm doing for the bottom lashes, sometimes I group them up in clumps, that way they look more natural because in real, real real life, when we when female, when us girls wear makeup or guys wear makeup, mascara will make the lashes clump and that's why we're doing that this way. Okay, 
and if we're sketching for the eyebrows what you want to do is you want to pretend like you're drawing individual hairs of the eyebrows and shade in the middle part to simulate the eyebrows and look more natural so no sh no sharpie tattoo eyebrows here we want natural eyebrows And I would highly recommend you get yourself a good flat opacity brush. So this brush is from Erin Griffin and it is called the Watercolor Loaded Brush. It's like my favorite brush of all time. You can find it under the link in my bio on Instagram. It, it links you to his website where you can download it for free. Um, but it basically is a flat tip brush with a nice hard edge and it also has some opacity building so you can kind of build up a little bit of pressure and control the brushwork a little bit, mix colors just a little bit. It's amazing. That man's a genius for creating that brush. Never have to create any other brushes. Okay, so nice eyebrows. I'm gonna make sure her nose tip right here feels wider than the rest of her nose so we're just gonna make this part curve angle inwards okay let's finish up her ears So her ears, we go back to that shape. Oops. It's a little bit wider up top, it angles a lot more. Goes in, wraps around her ear. We have that little cup right here, that curve. Same idea for this one. We have a top layer of the ear that kind of wraps around. Then we have a little cup on the inside. Close this up. We can finish up the earrings real quick. Oh, so actually, let me just erase the whole colors. I don't want you to all get distracted. That way you can also accurately adjust, uh, assess whether or not you're doing a good job in making her look like a cutesy female. So I would say our jaw is a little bit too square. Even though she does have a square jaw, we want to soften it up a little bit because she is a female. So I'm just going to round out the edges of her jaw just a tad bit. And in terms of how wide should the shoulders be, they're gonna you can measure how big you made the head. Then you're gonna make sure the shoulder is at least that wide, uh, like one head width wide. Like if you turned your head this way, it should be able to somewhat fit. Um, if you go wider, it looks a lot more masculine. Where if you go more narrow, it feels very childlike, very gaunt. Then we have our lips. So we're gonna start with that line first, okay? We don't know what shape we want it, we just know that the mouth should be right here, okay? We're gonna take a look at her shape, we're gonna see she has a little smile on the corners, lines up a little bit farther out than the nose, a little farther out. We're gonna create a U-shape in the middle right here. And her lip is relatively flat, so actually that U-shape is basically gonna be a curve. 
a straight curve. Curve down, curve down, create a little heart shape. Draw the bottom of her lip. Top of her lip, we're just gonna leave a little indentation for we have where we have the Koopa's bow. The reason why I'm making these curved up more is just because she has such a full lip that it would create more of a shadow or like it jets out more so you would be able to see the shape more. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit, assess whether or not we have things in the right place. I'm gonna say maybe I'm gonna zoom up her, push up her nose and mouth just a tad bit so it doesn't feel as low and she has more space for her chin. And we'll also make her chin just a little bit tad longer. And you can just real quickly shade that in. So easy way to shade, especially if you're a beginner because you want it to look somewhat finished after you're, you know, but you're not quite ready to shade everything, like paint everything. You can just do basic shadows. If you see some dark enough shadows, if they're light like this, squint your eyes, you'll probably not see it. So we'll aim for the shadow that's underneath the neck. That's the important one. Aim for the shadows that would potentially be in the lip right here, maybe. I did put a cap on 10, just cause I highly doubt it would ever get to that. But if we ever get more than like say three or four, I would probably likely put a timer on for the crits Right now, I don't have a timer on just because uh, not all of you send stuff and we're pretty close-knit enough that we can kind of get all of it done within that. But if I ever get around like more than say five, I'm definitely going to have to put a timer on for only about 20 minutes so we can get through everyone's work all in one day. And if we get to like 10, I would probably put timer for like 15 and then if we can't finish it within the three hours, I'll split it within two days. So that is one way we would have to do it. But hey, that's a long way to go, Misu. You're imagining me to become as big as Sam does arts or whatever. All right, let's finish up her hair. We're not gonna worry too much. So for her hair, we're going to start with banana shapes banana shape and then we're gonna erase away the tip make it a little bit skinnier so it looks like wispy all right like honestly I think it's working for us right now so far just because we don't have too many people and we're pretty close-knit that we can kind of free ball the <laughs> structure of the crits <laughs> but if I do end up getting more and more uh, people who sign up for this tier tier we're gonna have to put a little bit more structure in this Okay, finish up her hair. We're just big blobs for the hair. I don't want you to stress about <laughs> stress about the color. Oh, why is the okay? Stress about the hair being all the hair highlights and everything. I want you to focus on line work, getting your drawing skills very very well done. Okay, so let's finish up. When you do the hair bun, just take a look at the overall negative shape of the bun. So you see there's a bump bump and a bigger bump. So these two bumps are basically negligible compared to the big bump. So that's how you figure out, okay, am I doing this right? Am I fucking it up? Am I just a big ass <laughs> dumbass? <laughs> Best of my success. I would definitely have to figure out my schedule right now because 
I am working a full-time job outside, so we'll f have to find a good balance between just rub off all my makeup. A good balance between doing Instagram stuff and also Patreon stuff and building the social, okay? Get your wispy hairs. They don't have to be perfect. Be relaxed. Okay, we finish up the earrings. And so that's how I would want you to start out when you are a beginner. Start with line work. Try to make the girl look somewhat presentable. It doesn't have to be likeness. You don't have to get likeness down just yet because that's so, so hard. It takes so much practice, so much work. Um, you have to be very comfortable with your at, like your basic proportions of the human face. Then can you start to deviate from it and understand like, okay, this person has wider set eyes. This person's nose is taller, longer, shorter, etc. And that way you can get likeness down. The only reason I can somewhat get like this down is because I've been doing this a long time, okay? If I can't get it down, I should go jump off a cliff because I, I, someone, say, well, someone take away my license, okay? And then just quick thoughts about uh, your shading. You have to find a better brush. Your brush right now is too streaky. You need to use, uh, figure out how to balance your soft brush and your hard brush, hard, hard edges. So right here, it would look a lot better if we had just basically structured it off, squint your eyes. We're gonna turn this into black and white real quick. You'll see that's basically such subtle color sh value changes, sh value shifts, okay? So I'm going to say that this part, first of all, is too dark. If you're never sure about like if you're doing this the right way, you can always turn it into black and white and then you can really color pick your way through because I know it's hard for beginners to be able to see the values properly. So you need to kind of force yourself to learn, oh, what I'm seeing is not actually what it is. I have to re rewire the way I'm thinking. What I think is really dark may actually be a lot less contrasted than I would need to be. So you'll see, squint your eyes. You see that the whole girl is pretty much very one-dimensional, one value. So we're gonna fix that up real quick. It's actually maybe, actually this only this dark, right? Look, your original value right here, the actual value is like about a fourth of the way, okay? Let's get rid of that. Another method of going about painting the face is to do it via without any lines, which is definitely going to be a hunk and harder decision to make. Okay, I'm not gonna stress too much about making this perfect. I'm just going to try to make sure you can see how you can create um, a face if you don't do the line work, is you're gonna paint based on negative shapes. So let us choose one single value when you are painting using shapes. We're gonna paint one single value first. Get your egg shape. What the heck is that? Oh. egg shape okay get your egg shape down then we'll throw in a neck in there shoulders shoulders throw in the ears fix up the shape of the face because right here it's very straight slight curve same for the neck Then we throw in the hair real quick. I'm gonna focus on this hairline, not the bangs. The bangs we do very end, okay? You'll get distracted by the bangs.
and we're gonna make sure the hairline lines up with the side of that jaw. If it doesn't, you are gonna run into major territory issues later on, okay? And then we're gonna carve out our jaw using a shadow color. Okay, so you're starting to see a face come out of this, right? So basically when you are, you know, doing this like without any line work, that's how you would have to think about it. Then you have to kind of be like, okay, I think structure of the skull, we're going to have a little bit of shadow based on this eye socket. A little bit of shadow underneath the bridge of the nose because the nose kind of curves inwards, etc, etc. And that's just a lot harder for a beginner to kind of understand it because you basically have no concept of how the skull is actually structured. So do not do this, not until you are confident in your line work, okay? So please, Sullivan, start this step first. Make sure it should somewhat look presentable as itself, like you didn't have to color it, you don't have to do anything else, and it should look still good, okay? Let's see, we're going to continue on to the next critique. I'm going to say this is a PSD as always. And I will upload it so you can see it later. Uh, let's do Misu's Get Wrecked. Let's see. Uh... <laughs> you have two because you don't want to mess up one. I'm gonna get a drink of water real quick. I literally cannot tell the difference. Is, is it because my computer's lagging? <laughs> that is such a weird uh, <laughs> statement to say. <laughs> I'm gonna delete one of them. <sighs> you choose. Eeny meeny miny mo. If you can't choose, I will choose for you. Goodbye. Okay, let's work on rendering here. Big AF rendering concerns. Let me bust out your reference picture so we have good reference for the hands. Okay, uh, let's do new. New. Hide this baby to the side. Scoot, 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 scoot. Where are your referrals? Uh, referrals. So it's either you Greta labels everything or it's Misu who labels nothing. <laughs> but either way, both of y'all make it hard for me to find anything. I can't find either of your stuff anyway. Hey, yay, Portrait Studio, we love to see it. The bottom right here, layered nothing, labeled nothing. Anyway, let's let's move on to the rendering rendering, okay? So right here, first of all, let's make this darker because this is basically the pit of despair because the armpit is a pit for a reason. <laughs> you are lying because there is all inserted image. What am I supposed to do with that information? That means nothing to me. I am not a machine. Th 
this is decent labeling, but I don't even have to look through that one, okay? No, 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 no. You don't have to label them because they're references. Uh, as long as you know which reference it is, that's all okay, but... Because uh, even I don't label any of my references, let's be honest. Whatever floats your both boat in your workflow, okay? And we'll add a darker shadow along this edge so she looks like she's kind of blending into the shadow so she actually feels like she's sitting in the room. Girl with more orange light one. Even if you labeled that, I would, that would mean nothing to me. All right, so let's get this party started. So let's make sure we have a good division between each of these fingers. Don't worry about the color just yet. I just want to see some shadow. Sure. Uh, this shadow right here. Should not be this bright at the bottom. Because think about it, your light source is here, okay? So you would not catch that light here. You would get some reflected light, which would be a little bit saturated, a little bit slightly brighter, but not that much, honestly. So maybe just a little bit like this versus say this bright, bright light, which is only possible with this lighter. Uh, what is with this flame right here, bro? Why is this so crisp? I've never seen a fire that crisp. <laughs> Look at this fire, it's not that crisp. black line work i would never i would not suggest you use black with this one i would instead use a brownish warmish brown color so like uh maybe this color instead so it blends into the rest of it a little bit better Make sure this part of the eye is a little bit thicker because you know it's part of like the top eyelid the eyelid has dimension has 3d thickness thickness to it don't neglect your eyes save for the lower eyelid right here this part don't neglect it it has its own mind of its own So we gotta give a little shadow. And we'll blend out this edge just a tad bit. So it's not so harsh. I see some uneven coloring here. So we're gonna make this flat image right here, flat color. Then we'll come back in with some subtle shading, okay? Big brush, as big as possible, very lightly. Add just a little bit of structure to her face. And then blend out the edge. Remember, her face is tilted. Why would her mouth and her chin not be tilted too? Even her nose would still catch some shadow underneath because it's not directly facing her. She's an abomination. Well, we have to make her not be an abomination, okay? She's gonna look hot or else what are you doing to Himiko? You're fucking her up. She's supposed to be that thirst trap, okay? But she just died, so <laughs> she's like a dead trap. <laughs> okay, don't forget shadow. 
not shadow the highlight here. She really did fuck herself up. All in the name of love. <laughs> okay, so that uh, highlight right here would be slightly colored. Uh, be careful not to make it too bright. And add a little bit of color to it so it doesn't look out of place. Say for here, you need some deeper shadows on the back of her shoulder, so it looks like she's uh, actually sitting in that dark. See that? When you're drawing her hands, uh, start with like the main shadow first, and then come in with like the secondary light, which is going to be this bounce light. And then for the final, you'll just come back in with some of that extra bounce light. Very subtle, very soft, not too bright. Right here should be darker because we're not going to catch much light, okay? Oh, it's time for me to check out, bro. If we're gonna have a rim glow misu, we're gonna have it a little bit higher up. Don't just do it in a tiny little section. Light doesn't work that way. It would blend all the way up. And up here, maybe we'll just take a little bit of soft soft brush, a little bit of warm color. I'll warm up this area a little bit. Darkest shadows right here between each finger. We're trying to get that 3D shape of the fingers in there a little bit. Let's get that top section right here real bright. And this part, not so much. This knuckle right here is going to catch some of that light, so let's go! Zoom. Let's see, uh... This whole hair right here... Brighter, because it's basically right in front of us. What's the point of trying to fight it?
We need a shot shuttle right there. I believe there's one more neck shadow right here that you've been neglecting real hardcore right there. Her neck is this shape right here. Not over here. And then we can make her collarbones pop out a little bit. Add a little highlight. I think when you have these kind of edges happening, it's because your brush isn't big enough, so it's not being airbrushy enough to cover up that edge. So do make use of bigger brushes. It, I know it's like in, not intuitive to try to use a bigger brush, especially if you're trying to control what you're doing, but I promise you it will actually make your picture look a little bit more co cohesive, a lot more smooth. brush right here just use lasso tool to help you control what areas you're getting with that big brush see that Uh, we're gonna make sure we get this uh, shadow for the shoulder right here, so we feel round, sh round shoulder, not flat shoulder. And underneath the tank top, you can add just a tad bit shadow, so it can feel like it's actually sitting on top of her skin. Let's see if our shadows are looking crispy enough or if it's too fuzzy. <laughs> hey, but I think what you posted was pretty good for so far, okay? You major improvements compared to like what you first submitted to me last year. Fix that arm. Why is it so wobbly? It's actually not that wobbly, it's pretty straight. Let's catch some of that highlight on the top lip right here. Stylization. <laughs> there's 
there's a difference between stylization and wobbly arm AI. <laughs> okay, don't want people accusing you of using AI. <laughs> God, those people are so annoying. But it's also kind of funny, <laughs> not gonna lie. Gonna catch some of that light in the shoulder of yours. I'm not actually that dark. Do you see that? And I know I said the shadows are gonna be like green, um, but you do still want to have a little bit of reddish shadows because the background is very red. Oh uh, yeah, I I really do hate it when that happens. Such a such an inconvenience. Like, do that do they not know what art is? I'm gonna expand that highlight so it looks cuter. Um, the, if you have such a small highlight, it looks very weird on the nose. Very much out of place. And I would just go slightly deeper in the shadow. Because you have that black line for the lips, uh, you want to blend it into the rest of your picture. So we'll just go a little bit darker on the inside. So it looks a lot softer, a lot more blended, realistic. The cigarette, it kind of feels like it's the wrong angle because if uh, I'm going to use my pen right here to simulate the cigarette. So let's switch over to me, 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 me. Right. If I'm doing this. Her mouth would need to be a little bit more open to me. So we're going to make her mouth open up a tad bit so she's going to show off some teeth a little bit. We're going to make her less smiley. I could not have known that this was photoshopped in, so I guess that's a good good job on your part, okay? <laughs> hey, you're just being efficient.
then just add a tiny bit of that teeth showing. Uh, the cigarette, I would suggest we go... Slightly warmer in color, slightly, see that? the cigarette light itself right here we're gonna first make it super dark and then you can bust out some glowing effect okay uh, I am no smoker so I don't know let me look this up real quick see copy get this bitch out of here paste So uh, most of it would actually be lit. So maybe we can make this like a secondary light source, potentially make it super, super duper bright. And you could have, I don't know, a little wisp of the uh, thingy. So I'll do that on a different layer so you don't hit yourself <laughs> when you're trying to fix it if you don't like the way I put the little uh, thingies. You'll also want to do a tad bit of smokery dok. So like I showed you in the cloud tutorial month in July I believe. J -j -j July. We're going to fake it till we make it. Let's blur all the edges a little because uh, smoke isn't perfect anyway. Oops. 
not the brush I want. Smokity dokity dok. Oops. So yeah, maybe something like that. I don't know. Smoke is smoke. No defined shape. Okay. Uh, let me get rid of this weird shadow. I feel like it's just fucking up the whole thing. Let's finish up this uh, eye here before I call it. Oh my gosh. Uh, there is a structure to the eye when you are um, painting it. You need that shadow on the top of that lid in order for it to look like it's actually part of the eye. So we get gonna darken up this section up top right here. Get you that shadow. Um, cause right now the eyelid and the eye looks, or the eyelash and the eye basically look like they're like two separate entities, the eye's not part of the eye. So the eyelashes go down just a tad, put more wraps around the eye more. Give a little shout out for the bottom lashes. And when you do paint these bottom lashes, just give a little bit wider base and wispier ends so it feels a lot more natural because I don't think any eyelashes are actually that stiff. You can even group some of them up. Same for these top lashes. Make them more wispy just like how I showed Sullivan when you're sketching lashes more wispy at the ends. So you can kind of fake it more, fake it till you make it. Soften up the shadows right here. This is a round cheek, not a harsh edge. But we do have to get this shadow dark enough, okay? up the shape of the highlight here so her chin looks round I'm gonna shrink her jaw just a tad bit so she looks cuter
like a round cheek. You can have your harsh edges with the hair, not with the cheek. Okay, hair can be flatter, cheek a flat. Be careful with all these uh, hair strokes that you drew. Don't have too many in the highlight areas because you are drawing highlights right now. It should blend in properly. this area just a bit so this doesn't look like it's out of place see that in here navigator Again, be careful with the eye shape, it's round. And she's also going to have just a tad bit of shadow in the front because her eye is round, correct? So she's going to have a round shape for the eye. See that little highlight? Makes it feel a little bit uh, more round. All right, so uh, last thing let's do, let's fix up this flame is bothering the fuck out of me. It is bright, Misu. What are you doing to our flame? White in the middle, and then we'll take a little bit of uh, red orange, and we'll do a little bit of color dodging. Let's do color dodge right there. Voila. Change the lighter color. I don't like the green. The green is like too harsh. You're gonna make it a little bit duller green if you are gonna use a green. Let's change it. I can't even see colors right now. Those colors look right to me. Why am I actually going blind? Okay, we're gonna use a yellowy green if that's the case. The metal part. Okay, look, big shadow right here. You don't have that shadow. So we're gonna make sure we get some of that uh, reddish orange shadow. And metal reflects the environment, so if your environment is this reddish color, okay Mizu? We're gonna make sure we reflect some of that color. Do you see how instantly we transform it into being part of the environment? This reflection is going to get some of this lighter color, not fire color, okay? Same for here, we're going to make sure we go a little bit warmer in terms of the shadow for the finger because the finger is a very warm pinkish color. 
What? Why do I hear someone follow me? Whoop de doo! We got our people joining in, four viewers. Wow, I'm famous. <laughs> Uh, hope you enjoy the cart stream. We're just just destroying him, right? Destroying Misu's art right now. All right, so lighter right here. See that? Much better, correct? And just reflect a little bit more of that finger light too, because the lighter is metal, correct? So it's gonna reflect any of the color that's in its environment. Okay, so instead of a gray color, we're going to use more of a reddish color. And then I still don't like this green, so maybe we'll go for... Um, yeah, we'll do this dull kind of uh, green-red color so it matches the shadow that we have. Make sense? Finish up this heavy ass shadow right here. The neck is in desperate need of. Multiply. That whole neck needed that shadow. Do she the contrast? Okay, but we'll maybe change the color a little bit. It's too red. Go that way maybe. Okay, before, after, get a little bit more shadow. Zoom, 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 zoom. One more shadow right here. For her neck. Go forward. Destroying, of course, it's destroying. I am telling him his his foundations are slacking, and we gotta work on it. Right here, this highlight is way too bright unless her lighter is right directly in her face we're gonna tone this baby down a tad a, a little t tinge i want to have more of that eye in shadow i know you wanted to do the whole starry eye effect but this ain't it not not the way to do it Have just a tad bit more shadow in the eye and it'll look nicer. And I would probably suggest instead of putting the, sh the highlight there, we put the highlight on this side. You have more space for it. how the eye looks more realistic now <laughs> a little less creepy a little more uh believable we'll also get rid of the line because you don't want to see too harsh of a line especially when it's in the eye area or it's gonna look like wrinkles okay show uh last thing why is her eyebrow so skinny stylization don't do this to her misu please she needs eyebrows 
I want my thick brow girls here. All right, so before, after, before, after a little bit more polish and we fixed up a lot of the light source issues that we had. Um, anything else that I would probably do is you could totally do this SFX, like the whole light zooming pass. That would look really cool. Um, but otherwise, don't go too ham on that highlight right here. It's too bright. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. You can you could totally like I don't know, make these glow a little bit if you want. just a tad bit like that and it still looks pretty cool <laughs> all right it was a botched <laughs> please be sue why are you doing Himiko so dirty like this you are so cruel to her okay let's finish up with Jessie's um and then I'm gonna go eat dinner oops why is it so big all of a sudden shoot all right, so, Jesse, this one versus this one. Um, it really depends on what vibe you're going. If you're trying to go for a majestic, I would totally take this one instead and what you want to do. Is we're gonna add some lighting here and there. So we're gonna use a warm light because I'm a sucker for warm light. Throw it in there, and then we're gonna shave them away a little bit. Ugh, you can hear me growling. That's how hungry I am. Like, I'm starving, y'all. Lower the opacity just a tad bit. And we'll also do a little bit of shadowing. I definitely like your whole purple shadow thing, so keep going with it. But now we're going to add some more areas of light for you, so you're not sitting like there's nothing to do with it. Light right there. Splash our vibes. <laughs> yeah, he just needs to do 300 times more. Uh, work and that that will be perfect for release. Um, I would also okay before I even go on with the lighting just yet, I do want to make sure we decide to push this slightly down, actually slightly up. Actually, I want a little bit more of the staircase, less of that window. And we is going to create a shape for these staircases uh, like this. This is like shittiest staircase you'll ever see, but whatever. You can do the work. I'm just here to give you the guidance. Potentially, let's shrink this even more in this way so we get even more of the um, the gallery right here. Uh, let's just throw in the shadow for the curtains because I'm going to talk about how to light those curtains real quick.
Okay, so when we expand up our canvas a little bit, we get a little bit more chance to be dramatic. Yes, hello everyone. Hello, Jesse's stream. Jesse's so famous, he's being called out by a big, big time Instagram artist. <laughs> We are talking about Jesse's art and we're going to destroy it in real time. So prepare yourself to not be able to look at your friends, right? <laughs> okay, so this is what we got right now. Uh, we're, we're, we're gonna scoot these babies over. Hand rests are gonna be closer to her because why the hell is her hand needing to stretch all the way that far. All right, it doesn't make sense. Um, scoot that to behind the foxes. And then instead in the back here, you could put some banners, <laughs> some shitty banners. <laughs> yes, I'm totally great at trying banners. <laughs> okay, um, uh, maybe we'll do golden banners or something, I don't know. Do, do, do. some kind of color banners. We'll just put them placeholders for now. We'll change the colors as we trek along and trick figure out this color scheme that we've got going on, okay? Um, potentially, let us make them uh, turquoise color because maybe we want to do a purple pink uh, turquoise color scheme or we could do more, um, keep it within the purples and pinks family that's up to you. Uh, if you respond in time, you will get to have a role in choosing the color scheme. If not, I will be the one to choose. banners here. Um, I haven't even addressed the values of them yet. We're not worrying about that just yet. I want to make sure we have some stuff to fill up the space a little bit. Shoop. These are going to be in front of the curtains. In front of the curtains. Yes, in front of the curtains. Okay, um, and then maybe what we can do is we can put like a pillar right here. Another pillar right here. To try to break up the shapes a little bit. change the shape of the stairs, make them more round and curved. So we get a little bit more dramaticism in your picture. Shoom, shoom. They're really shitty stairs. Okay, Jesse, you're gonna have to fix these up. Shoom, another one right there. Okay, something like that. And then let us do a little bit of Photoshop to try to fix up the perspective and push it even more dramatic. Yeah, even if I don't stream, I would like to like to see the clout. 
you're not doing it right, Jesse, as one of my disciples, it's written in the contract that you share my stuff to every single person you know. Okay, so there's your light, there's your light, la da la. Super bright, super bright, super bright light. Alright, and now let's talk about uh, the whole lighting situation. So, when we're lighting these curtains, curtains will not be white, unfortunately. Especially if your curtains naturally are not white. Um, if you put white on them, they look very fake. Way too shiny than, than, than they're supposed to. Uh, so when you're drawing these uh, shadows and the lights, use chunks rather than like really sparse lines because curtains are really thick very round correct so there's no reason why they should um, have such skinny skinny shadows or skinny lights and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some light to these columns so you get some of that bounce light So I'm start with a saturated color first. Saturated warm color, then I'm start going to desaturate and choose sort of like a pinkish, grayish white color for the light. Again, these are like rough, really rough uh, ideas because I'm, I don't think I have time to sit here and do it all for you, so you're gonna have to do a little bit of the work, okay? Some of the heavy lifting. Here's some shadow. You can take a look, look up some references of um, some pillars, columns, etc, etc, and get an idea of how to do the bases, or like if you wanted to add, say, some grooves to it, you can understand like, okay, where's the lights, where's the shadow? a little bit of light back in to make the grooves or whatever um, then you can take a chance to think about like what you could put inside the banners here it's all it's a good old good old opportunity to play around with your world building because the, the foxes are so cute <laughs> don't don't neglect your environments okay then we're gonna readjust the colors for the figure because everything is that pinkish color so I want to make sure we get similar pinkish color for everything else. Shoot. I'll have to do some major readjustments for the color. All these reds here, instead of being an orange red, what you'll want to do is we want to push it more towards a purpley color. So we'll probably use a magenta fuchsia color, if you must be precise. Same for this one, push it more towards your orangey, your pinkish peaches color. See how that's starting to come together? Then I'm not sure what color her um, her dress is, but I just have to assume that it's white. So that means our highlights are going to be more towards that whitish color. So she's gonna get some of that light from the top. And 
with drapey fabrics, okay? Uh, oh boy. Let's do this. Her foot is right here, correct? And then I have to make sure that right here, her hip right here is in shadow. Still somewhat connects to the rest of her body. We're gonna get fabric draping like this. Fabric drapes is not stiff. And we'll also take the chance to kind of, you know, make really flowy, nice fabrics. Then I have to assume like the rest of her leg is like over here, tucked in over this way. I don't know how her foot looks like. same time we're gonna make sure her hair gets some of that highlight some of that shadow some of that darkness don't neglect it just because it's white what those are underneath her eyes but they bother me a lot <laughs> for her nose this part is gonna get that high that brightest point okay top of her head gets that brightest point everything else is slightly darker in shadow Make sure don't make her chin too small you have you are guilty of this jesse you make all the girls that you draw their chins way too small because you're overcompensating for the cutesy small 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 face And when it comes to rendering ombre hair like this, make sure you're using your soft brush so you can get the values really blended well. Okay, if you do want to make it look like, like her hair is kind of patchy, come back in with the dark after. a slightly textured brush just to do the last minute strands okay that way it blends in much better than this right now it's looking so patchy like she's she's gone to the wrong hairdresser they need to fix it right now same for fox ears nice and bright This part is going to be in shadow, fox ear, shadow. Same for her foxtails, we're going to add some light to it. We're going to go bright light over here.
figure out where your light source is, Jesse. I'm gonna say it's gonna be from the top, probably. And at the same time, we can add a little light to the tops of these foxies. foxes. Right here you have the opportunity to get some shadows inside back into her dress, so let us do that right now. That way you have a good contrast between the light parts of the dress and then some shadows, and you can see the silhouette of the figure better too. Same for these, require a little bit of that brighter light up on top. It's rough, rough, super rough. Finish up adding the lights here. Okay, and then we're gonna come back in with this hard light layer to really drive in some of those lights okay we're gonna go bright along the tops of these you can either do hard light or you can play around with the different types of layer styles just so you see which one you like. Maybe Vivid actually, Vivid would really make it pop. But be careful not to do too much because you don't want to overpower everything, okay? Okay, uh, let's see. I'm gonna blur out this edge right here. When it comes to like blinding light, the edges of the windows are gonna get that blurry look because the light is leaking so much you're not going to see the edges of anything properly anymore okay so maybe something like this could work
we're gonna add a little bit of purple color here and there so you don't have so much uh, pinks and oranges and get some more cool colors I'm throwing some weird shit on here I want to do sort of a coolish purple color so we get variety in your palette okay and then you can even I don't know ah wait this is not even the right layer oh my god oh my god I'm really fucking things up for myself okay Last things you can do just for extra tad bit of color. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate for it. Maybe just add a little bit of greenery here and there. You can practice your foliage. Haha! <laughs> I will forever make you practice more foliage because you need to know how to do it. Okay. Um, throw in some color, some balance, so it's not just pure. purples and blues, you have a little bit extra pops of colors here and there. Okay, if you're going for this one instead, um, this is fine. You just definitely need to do a little bit more light in terms of this right here, fox. Uh, the fox tails would not catch the light that way. If you're choosing to have it on the right side, this is where you're going to catch that light. Me little tads bits of that color here and there like that you would probably catch more of that color like that some of the foxtails, catch the shadow there, catch the light this way, catch the light this way. This is really messy, but you get the idea. And then again, more light will be caught this way. And then instead of just having this tiny ass light right here, you're definitely going to want to do a bigger section of light. So I'm going to cover this up real quick first. Shoot. Don't know how I'm going to do it, but we'll try. Oof. Oof. Okay, just pretend that was covered up properly. <laughs> it's not covered up properly, but we don't care, we don't care. It works, it works. Okay, let's do that warm light. Maybe we'll do overlay. Do a bigger section this way. Shoot. 
I, I would probably do something like this instead. And then in that case, this background right here, we would have to change it a little bit. Um, maybe instead, um, you could make it um, partially covered window, something like this. Or I'm not good at <laughs> window designs, but uh, like those fancy windows, maybe. Like you could do some weird design in there. So it you know, <laughs> covers of that huge space you have in the window, um, especially if it's not the light source. No reason we should have it like that. The candles, bigger. Use white for the very centers of the candles. Uh, continue to use the purples for the shadow. And don't just suddenly jump back into the reds. Maybe you can go for like a magenta -y color for the shadow instead, but it still should be somewhat purpley like that. These foxes might want to catch some of that light or else it's going to be too dark for them. And then same for the floor, we'll need to give it just a tad bit of color light I mean. It's mist, I don't know. Oops. Something like that, maybe. If you do plan to do this way, um, then you just finish off with like a nice. Nice glow here. Shadows up top, too. Um, so you have two options, this one where it's a little bit brighter, a lot more ethereal-like, whereas this one is a little bit darker, more moody, okay? So that's gonna be it for this critique session. I am so hungry. I am going to go eat some food. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas this or a wonderful holiday if you don't celebrate Christmas. Uh, this year has been great. Thank you all for all your support. It really, really makes me feel happy that to know that you guys love my art so much and you want to learn from me, learn to grow as artists together, okay? So I will see you next year for next year's critique. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy holidays, everyone.